awesome. So, I mean, like you um, requested for an interview from Google. So, is it like just because, uh, just or like you specifically have upcoming interview with Google? So that would be my first question. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, I do not have upcoming interviews with Google, um, mm -hmm. but I get the sense that the Google interviews on interviewing.io are the best ones. <laughs> so this is the one that I'm, I'm booking for practice. Understood, understood. <clears throat> and um, is it fair to assume that you are a uh, generic backend engineer uh, or a full stack engineer? Do you not um, for a SPI role or you uh, have like MLE or some other specialization? Uh, uh, this is pretty reasonable. I think full stack is the closest of the options you mentioned. I don't actually have any experience with web development whatsoever, but mm. uh, I, I also don't have like a super specialized focus area. Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's a generic suite kind of uh, uh, roles which you would be interested in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, one last question. Uh, where you are in your preparation, like? as you could and you just want to <clears throat> uh, like understand how uh, you are presenting an interview you are at that level or uh, you you are still like you, you still want to get a uh, hang of like how well you are prepared a great question um so for background um i was working at google um out of university that was my first full time job i got laid off at the beginning of last year uh, oh. i was part of Layoffs. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, but uh, so I, I passed Google interviews that time around, and that time I felt very prepared, and I felt like I did extremely well. Um, this time I'm just starting my job search. It's been like maybe two weeks since I've started, and I I feel a little bit rusty. I had assumed it would be like easy again because I just remember everything, but it turns out I think mm. the code is kind of one of those. Uh, things that fades without practice, like just in terms of speed, raw speed. Um, but in any case, I, I think I have all the fundamentals and mostly it's a matter of just getting repetition. Um, so, sure. Yeah. Um, so what I will do is I will kind of have this uh, expectations that you are looking out for how you are, uh, like I, I will assume you as someone who is prepared uh, mm -hmm. But who, who who might be the team, the interviewing part of it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, one last question, uh, one more question. Like, uh, what level you would be targeting for? I think like you mentioned three years. It's mentioned that you have three years of experience. Uh, what um, level you were in Google? Uh, was it L three? That's right. So that was my first job out of university, and it was L three, mm -hmm. like a new grad, university grad. Um, and I was only working there for eight months before I got laid off. So I think that. Mm -hmm the roles I'll be considered for are still entry level roles again, like L3. Got it. And like currently you're working? Uh no, I haven't worked in um over a year. <laughs> I've just been unemployed. It's been nice honestly, but I think it's time for me to start looking. Okay, okay, okay. You 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 took a break and then now you're coming back yeah. to the market. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. Makes sense. Uh sure. So I think like uh, that makes sense. So L three, uh, you are targeting like L three kind of roles, and yeah. yeah, and got it. Cool. Thanks for context. Uh, yeah. I think like uh, I usually this helps me to understand like what kind of questions I should choose. Uh, sure. Because yeah, I have been uh, there where like people are uh, very early in their preparation and then they 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 lack right. the basics of the graphs and stuff. So. It's sure. like very demoralizing asking directly yeah. about that. So I added these things into my uh, initial thing. Uh, got it. Cool. Uh, yeah. So usually, like uh, I, I will spend like around 40 minutes, um, mm -hmm. or like maybe uh, for more than that, um, and then like I will keep some time for feedback uh, based on like whether you have a hard stop at the end of one hour. Uh, I don't have any hard stop at the end of one hour. Uh, and I think like you are coming back uh, into uh, the interviewing thing, so I would I would like you to give him some more time, uh, maybe okay. in terms of like uh, some other aspects about uh, job search or uh, yeah, so a few a few other aspects uh, if if needed. Uh, okay. So if you have some extra time, I can plan according to that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've got no um, commitments after this. Cool. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's start with the first. Uh, first question. Sure. 
so let's say that you you want to design a leaderboard class and this class should provide uh, three different methods first one is add a score uh, so basically given a player id and a score you should update the leaderboard uh, like the this uh, you should add that much score to the player id and if it's like a first time you are seeing this player id uh it should be existing score should can be assumed at zero and this should be like total score after add score okay. uh the top k will return the score of uh like sum of like top k players uh hmm. score sum of top k players and the reset of uh reset for any particular player id will reset the score of that particular player uh to zero okay okay interesting cool um that all sounds good to me uh I guess I'll start making some notes and maybe asking some questions. Um, sure. So it sounds like there are a collection of players and each one has a score. Um, uh, are the player IDs known in advance or are they like generated and sort of uh, arbitrarily? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, how, how would that uh, help you? Um, yeah, I just want to understand. Good question. That. I'm not really sure yet. I'm just sort of. <laughs> Asking probing questions to try to get all the specs, but got it. Um, uh, yeah, so know. I think um, I think yeah. So you can assume that uh, these player IDs are uh, random. Uh, but yeah, so in, uh, maybe I can help you. Like how this could have helped you. Uh, mm -hmm. If there would have been a specific range, let's say the player IDs are not more than thousand, uh, mm -hmm. you could have used array as a data structure rather than mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. hash map as a data structure. Those things can right totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's just um, let me ask some even more basic questions about the data types involved, like the player ID uh, you suggested just now might be an integer. Is that the case, like positive integers for players? Is that uh, assumed? Good question. Yeah, it's, it's a non-zero uh, integer value. Okay, non-zero integer. Sorry, uh, non-negative non -negative right. integer value. Non-negative, sure. Okay, non-negative, sure, sure, sure. Um, and I'll assume it's small enough to fit in like 4 billion, something like that, a 32-bit integer. Is that okay? Exactly, yeah. Those are the good questions, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, and then the scores, it sounds like they're not fractional. Are they also integral? Yeah, they are also integers. Okay, so let's say that. Uh, and like everything can fit in the integer range, uh, even the uh, sum of all the scores uh, will fit in the integer range. Okay, so awesome. Um, okay. Um, cool. I think one thing that'll help me um, uh, to get something on paper is actually just to write the sort of stubs for the methods um, in code. Uh, are you all right with me doing that? Uh, sure. Okay. Sounds good. I'll get to that. So, um, leaderboard class, leaderboard, um, and it'll have some methods, probably a constructor. Mm -hmm. um, and then add score, player ID, top K, top K is also a number. This is what I'm thinking so far, um, mm -hmm. and there is reset. Let me write that down. Um, okay. Um, and you said to design this class. Do you mean that I should write the code to implement it as well? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Sounds good. Um, okay, so I should actually be thinking about like data structures and like practical sort of stuff at some point. I don't want to um, move too slowly here. So, so let me start thinking about that. So I'll probably want a collection. Um, I'm guessing the collection would be keyed by the player ID and store values, which are current score. Um, I think it makes sense to use a hash map since the player IDs are from an unbounded range. 
Um, so imagining this is like scores, uh, maybe player scores or something. Um, hash map you could do the two. Uh, player ID score. Um, and then I guess the idea would be well, let me ask some questions about sort of what your um, uh, expectations are or like what you want from me. Like, are you, is this a case where you're hoping me to talk about the big O time complexity of these various operations and like, you know, make reasonable choices mm -hmm. to minimize them? And yeah. Make them? yeah, so I, I'm okay with like you going through iterations and uh, not having all the choices at the first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I will definitely love if you can identify some trade-offs uh, yeah, yeah. definitely uh, have a good time uh, having that. Yeah, that's, but, yeah, that's not super important. Okay. Yeah, I can try. Um, so, yeah, trade offs. I mean, you mentioned using a flat array. In this case, that would be, I guess, like. Uh, no, no, no I, um, that, that, that was not a hint towards a solution. I see. Anyway. Oh, for I sure. I was just sure. using some uh, generic. I, I was just talking yeah. in general, like these kind yeah, of yeah. inputs can be uh, used oh, totally. in that aspect. Yeah. Cool. Totally. No, I, I just meant that I, I, I can talk about why that's bad if that's something that mm. would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, can you talk about why it would be bad? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so the, I guess the issue is that the player IDs uh, come from a range of like zero to four billion, which uh, if you want to pre-allocate a flat array that doesn't dynamically grow and that just has like direct access buckets for all players, that array has to have at least Four billion, um, you know, uh, cells, and so it'll take like four gigs of memory. Or I guess in practice, because there's a four byte integer stored for each, it'll take maybe sixteen gigs of memory, which is mm -hmm. probably unreasonable. <laughs> Unless, I mean, you know, maybe you you have a certain uh, usage pattern that actually makes that make sense. But it seems very unlikely uh, for typical workloads. I guess is what I'm thinking. Um, so I can note that this is like a flat array. Uh, way too much space. Too much space up front. Probably not a good idea. Okay, fine. Um, hash map seems pretty natural. Um, like, we'll take uh, um, sort of initially uh, no space at all, and then the space grows proportional to the number of players that are currently um, that currently have non-zero score. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, interesting. Add. Right, so the add score will never take a negative number. It's not like you need to reduce scores. It's only reset that would decrease the score. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I'm just I'm clarifying something I was asking earlier. But like the score input to add score, like that is an unsigned number, right? Just yeah, yeah, so, that uh, is also unsigned number. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. non-negative. Yeah. So I guess, anyways, what I was in the middle of saying is just that the uh, the space complexity will grow linearly with the number of um, player eyes, players that have non-zero scores. Mm. Um, Got it. Which, which is kind of necessary. It's going to be efficient so. in terms of storage. Got it. Um, but you said won't or will? Can you repeat? Uh, I'm saying like uh, like like that does make sense, but. Uh, uh, it's okay. Like the total, uh, you, having uh, the complexity with terms of like number of calls which are happening to this um, object, yeah. uh, having an order of that should be okay. I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I see. Okay. So in, in particular, it would be linear in the number of calls to add score. Um, okay. Uh, right. Okay, I guess the so anyway, so I'm 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 probably missing the point of the question here because add score and reset are trivial if we have a hash map, and that's all well and good. But there's this top operation that I haven't actually started thinking about yet. So let me think about how I would implement the top operation. Um, I guess it would be nice to have some sort of priority queue, probably. So let me let me think quietly about that because I'm struggling to think and talk simultaneously. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, there are a lot of trade-offs here. I feel, or at least, 
I can't think of an obviously optimal um, thing right away. Okay, so um, uh, maybe I'll, it's, it's hard because there's so many parameters I could uh, use, but let's say n, uh, let n be the number of uh, method calls, the total number of method calls. This is a bit um, coarse grained, but uh, I think still useful. I'll say o of n space, uh, add score can be o of one time, uh, resets o of one time. Um, meta question, which you don't have to answer during the mock. I'm curious if this is like typical um, sort of thing to do for simplicity and, and like this is, this is something people do. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah, those are uh, you are you are going in the right direction, but maybe sure. yeah. Sure. Uh, that key could be anything, and uh, you can assume that that key could be uh, less. Uh, most of the time, it should be less than uh, total number of players. Yeah, that's a great question. I hadn't thought to ask that yet. So if k is larger than the number of players, I guess implicitly there's a bunch of zeros. <laughs> Like you can invent right. players that have score zero, so the top should only sum the minimum of current on players in K, whichever is right. Smaller. And you can even uh, you can even think uh, in that case like uh, different ways of handling it. One way could be like it's not a valid operation, so you can just throw an exception, or you can just okay. use the sum of all the existing players. Like you right. a few things that you can uh, ask. Like yeah, in the actual interview, that that could have been a good uh, yeah. input from. Uh, your site. Totally. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, got it. I think I like the choice of using the, if k is larger than the number of players, I think I like using the sum of all players, but uh, mm. I see how that's a, uh, a choice to make. Um, I'm just trying to think about how to implement this if we had a hash map. Like the naive thing would take O of n time, n time. This would be naively. Um, how, how would you do it in a n time? Because k could be more, right? So how would you maintain right. top k, uh, top k aspect of it? Um, right. So the actual implementation would involve scanning the whole player's scores. Um, mm -hmm. You could maintain a uh, sum of top k. Yeah, sure. You could maintain a priority queue of bounded mm -hmm. size, size k, and okay. Uh, Will it be like a mean heap or uh, a max heap? That's a great question. Um, deep in my memory, I've seen a leak code question like this, and I remember it's the non-intuitive answer. <laughs> so let's mm -hmm. see. I guess if you're trying to find large things, you'll actually keep a uh, min heap so that the least mm -hmm. useful uh, thing you've seen so far is the one these throw out. Mm -hmm. um, that gives you efficient access to uh, update and always hold the top K things you've seen so far. And then once you get to the end of the stream, you have uh, a collection of K things that are the largest, and then you can add those up and return. Does that all make sense? Awesome, this is perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm um, okay with this. What would be the complexity of your top K operation in that case? Yeah, uh, O of N, like I've written on line 26, um, because um, you do have to- Are you sure? Well, um, O of number of, players, I guess, um, which is bounded by n. Mm, uh, won't like adding into priority queue cause extra? Oh, there's a log factor. I'm sorry, yeah. I mean, log factors to me, it's just like mm. a constant factor. <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, your your machine can't store more than two to the 64 uh, bytes of memory, and not even close. So, so 64, yeah. I guess, is, is what I'm imagining. But yes, there are definitely log factors, and in this case, it's log k. So I can throw that in there if you like. Sure. Uh, cool. I'm I'm good with this. Uh, let's let's try to write uh, code for this. Yeah. Okay. Then sure. Absolutely. Let's. Um, so let's fill in some of these. So new. This is pretty easy. Air scores. Uh, hash map. New. Fine. Um, add score. Self entry. No self. Air scores. Entry. Air. Air ID. Or default. Plus equals score, and this inserts with zero if it doesn't exist. Remove, I think it's called. So they're called remove or delete, I forget which. ID, that's pretty easy. Um, and this will succeed if the player ID doesn't exist, which I think is fine based on the spec. Um, you say it's guaranteed. Um, I don't 
need to take advantage of that. So I'll, I'll write it the way I've done. Um, uh, yes. So okay. So now top. So um, the k equals min of uh, k and so on. Okay. So this is making sure that there are at most uh, the k is bounded by the number of players um, to start with, and then what we want to do is um, get the k largest uh, scores. Uh, and then add them up. So this is the goal. Um, we can do this with a loop. So let's loop over uh, for score in top player scores values. Um, and we want a min heap. So I said min heap, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, k largest equals binary heap new. Um, and basically, we could do a couple of things. If they are just when it's less than k, it's easy. They are just dot push. There's a detail here, which is that the standard library uh, heap is a max heap by default, so you need to um, reverse the definition of ordering. Um, which you can do with this like thin wrapper type uh, called reverse. Um, mm -hmm. API details aside, the, the gist is that we want it to be a min heap, and we've done that. Um, mm -hmm. So okay, they're just not in most k. Okay, so basically, if it's saturated, if it's fully k things, you could say let um, score equals oh, we'll call that existing score. The existing score equals k largest dot top, and then uh, let uh, larger equals max of uh, score, score, and then k largest dot push uh, reverse. Oh, sorry. the gist of the of the core approach here where we're where we're scanning and if the heap is saturated we sort of uh, we'll take the smallest element from the heap and we'll compare it to our existing one and we'll put back whatever one is larger so that way we maintain this invariance of keeping the largest things that we've seen in this uh, prefix of the stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the very final thing we have to do is just add them so it's simply the largest to iter sum to do it um, uh, it's interesting that I have access to a compiler in this editor. Like, do you want me to fix all these errors, or should I just keep writing? Uh, it? No, no, no. I, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. I think most of them is just because I haven't imported the standard library names. It's like a right. import statement is all. But uh, yeah. Uh, so I guess with that, I'm I'm done this this approach. Uh, I think this is kind of all we need to do. Awesome. Uh, I think yeah. Do you have any, um, yeah, maybe like, I'm not saying that this is super important. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to spend some time to think about a uh, way to uh, kind of like uh, optimize this? And by saying of optimizing it, I don't mean that you should optimize uh, everything. It's okay to have extra time in other operations, but let's say like, can you, mm -hmm. opt uh, with that uh, trade off, can you try to optimize your top K? Uh, API. Cool. So maybe like to uh, optimize that, you might incur additional cost in ad score or research score. And yeah. Be okay with that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, in particular, it is kind of brutal that uh, one of our operations takes linear time because. Uh, yeah, but like uh, I totally yeah. understand. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes this might be uh, okay because like uh, the probability of top key operations could be very less in the actual. Uh, Production. So in that case, this right. would be efficient way of doing it, and you can even talk mm -hmm. about and you can sell your solution in that way also. So yeah, that, that basically, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of aligns with what I was uh, sort of getting at here, which is uh, in a bad case, uh, you could have linearly many calls to top, and since they take linear time, mm -hmm. you'd end up with a quadratic 
um, sort of overall runtime uh, for your uh, for your whole sort of like batch of operations, which is a thing that um, yeah. So so okay. So if we are interested in other ways of doing this. I'm especially interested in a way that doesn't have any linear time operations so that we don't get that bad case that I just covered, but um, maybe that's too ambitious. So I'll, I'll just sort of think uh, think of what else we might do. Um, mm, yeah. Like I guess at a high level, it seems like it would probably be helpful to store additional information um, in the class. Uh, I'm just trying to think about what and how to organize it. Um, so let me think quietly for a couple minutes about that. Sure. Oh, okay. I have something that I'm mulling over, but I need to sort of like um, uh, think through the details, which I guess I'll try to do aloud. Um, it feels like some sort of binary tree data structure um, could be pleasant, such that we mm -hmm. maintain a roughly sorted um, collection, sort of sorted by score increasing. Um, mm. So. Uh, so if we did that, and there's the details of uh, what to do when there's a tie of two players having the same score, but I'm sure we could figure mm -hmm. something out. Probably we could just break ties arbitrarily, say by player ID. Um, mm -hmm. And then supposing we did have this uh, binary history. Go ahead. Uh, if you if you look at the uh, top k expected output, it's just a sum. It, it does not care about which player score you are using to score it. Uh, Okay. Okay. That sounds yeah, relevant. Yeah. Uh, interesting. But I, I like the idea that uh, sorting some sense of like loose sorting could be a way of looking at it. And what are the options? Like I think like, your priority queue is also a binary uh, tree kind of implementation. Uh, what other binary tree could you can use? I see. I see. I mean, I think this binary tree thing would have worked for what it's worth, but um, I'll pivot. Um, so. Uh, I think it's quite reasonable to to keep this binary heap um, uh, in the leaderboard class. So suppose we have held onto a binary heap that had size uh, k, and maybe we cache the sum as well. Um, so we're both storing the set of uh, let's say like the set of players uh, in the top. I needed some better terminology for this, but like. The leading players, um, in some sense. Okay. Um, what, what, are you aware of binary search tree? Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, are you aware about binary search tree? Y yes, I'm aware of binary search trees. Yeah. Can you use that somehow here? Uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I can combine my two thoughts. So, supposing. Uh, supposing we kept a binary search tree of the, well, let me think about this. Because the binary search tree is actually a pretty good priority queue, all things considered. Um, so we could use that for the top K. Like, I guess what I'm thinking is, because people sometimes get reset and they sometimes leave the top K, like we need to collect, collectively store a collection that has all player IDs, both the leading players and the normal players. Um, mm -hmm. And probably we'll split that into two different collections and then sort of manage the movement between the collections. Uh, in particular, when you have someone evicted uh, from the leading collection, like a reset happens on the top K, mm -hmm. and you want to promote someone from the normal collection, 
Um, that's sort of one of the more interesting cases. Uh, uh, let me see. So I think, honestly, I feel that we could probably do this with priority queues of either flavor. Like these could be binary heaps, these could be binary search trees. I'm not certain it would matter tremendously. I think both would probably work. But the gist, I guess, actually this feels very simple in weak coding maybe when it boils down. So maybe what we could do is um, have a max heap and a min heap. And the max heap, um, which I'm visualizing sort of to the left, is, um, is storing all the players who are not leaders, um, and then the min heap is storing the k uh, sort of currently, well, wait, I'm sorry, so top k, wait a second. I'm sorry, so k isn't fixed. Uh, I need to rewind my thinking because I've been imagining k to be fixed, and that's not the case. So let me think now. Um, okay, 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 so, I'm sorry. So now the k is not fixed, that's probably a simpler approach using what? Wow, okay, yeah, I, I need to take uh, another couple minutes, I think, to think, to, to rethink of some approaches, but I'll see what I come up with. I mean, like there, I guess mm -hmm. this is maybe worth mentioning. Like, um, uh, I haven't bothered to because it feels like it's not that much better. But we could do a binary search tree, BST, um, uh keyed by score, increasing, um, and this would be on space where n is the number of method calls. Uh, there would be like log factors, um, for add score. Presets by log factor. Um, top. Like the, the sort of almost trivial thing is like this. And like the idea is you, uh, well, no, let's think, let's think, let's think. The BST needs to be augmented by the uh, size of the current subtree. I can explain what I mean if that's not yet clear. So there's this is not like the standard BST, but this is a BST. Because um, as long as you can find the case largest element quickly, then you find the case, and this is up, up to off by one, to find the case largest element, and then mm. add up the scores of the top K. Um, Got it. Uh, I think like, yeah, I think like there, there, there exists some uh, implementations which allows you uh, to iterate through this BST, maybe from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, that would have helped you. Oh, um, wait, but yeah, yeah. Better. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, forget the thing about the, I said about augmented, but like go from the top down. That makes way more sense. Uh, right. Go from the top down. I was kind of assuming you'd have to go from the bottom up, but this makes more sense. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, thanks. Uh, cool, awesome. I think yeah, those those are the good ideas. Let's let's discuss one more problem. Um, so that like you have more practice. Um, sure. So I'm typing at the beginning. So um, I feel like there's something can... that has. Uh, yeah, I, I'll come back to this, or maybe I'll ask you more about it later. But I, I feel like I'm just on the brink of something better than either of these approaches. But okay. Uh, yeah. Can you? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm all ears. Uh, can you explain that? Oh no, I mean like I don't have it. I just have an intuition, really. Um, uh, yeah, you can share the intuition also. Uh, I guess just that it feels like there should be a way to efficiently update the data structure throughout add score and reset, such that top basically says that all of the operations are like constant or log. I mean that's that's the goal here really. That's what I was uh, clawing at, um, and I guess yeah. I mean beyond that, I think I'm I'm not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. uh Cool. I think like um, this is good data structure. Uh, binary search tree, uh, 
you, you came up with maybe yeah. there is there could be some way of optimizing if it is if you are trying to deal with uh, in a practical sense maybe you can bucketize uh, these scores into different buckets and then try to mm-hmm. just work on the buckets in the um, largest buckets and then mm-hmm. lesser buckets and then uh, so oh. it will kind of reduce somehow practicality but theoretically you can still end up having everything in the topmost bucket right so mm-hmm. yeah so those those could be like some uh, way of like practically optimizing in the real situation Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, in a theoretical sense, uh, you cannot. I think like uh, give a guarantee that that approach would be better than uh, right, right. Yeah, this one. So I guess just out of a burning curiosity to ask you directly, do you know of an approach that has a uh, sublinear time for all three operations? Uh, no, no, I wasn't expecting oh. even that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, and like you don't know that it exists. Like you're, it's not known. To yeah. You. Yeah, yeah, I think like it. Uh, at least not too known to me. Yeah. Interesting. That uh, was all I was looking like, for. I would have been quite unsatisfied. Um, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so I think like uh, I was expecting like log uh, n for um, add score, log n for reset, and for top mm-hmm. it would be k log n. Uh, I I was okay with that. Oh, log n. Yeah, I'm missing. I'm always missing log factors. All right. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Thanks. Uh, cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's move to the second question. Uh, it's again like uh, based on some numbers. Uh, there is a you, you start with one and you want to reach to the target, and uh, in any particular step you can uh, either increment it or you can double it. Uh, so you have to understand uh, return like what are the minimum steps required to transform one to the target. Hmm. Minimum yeah, steps required. Wow. Okay. Uh, my first thought is dynamic programming, but let's uh, let's actually read the question. Playing game with just start with one, want to reach target, and move. You can either add one or double. I can use the increment operation any number of times. However, I can only use the double operation uh, as a limit. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes it harder to write the code, but might not change the approach that much. Um, given the two integers. And the minimum number of moves needs to restart. Okay, well, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I might as well just jump straight to dynamic programming because I'm mm-hmm. I have a pretty solid intuition that that's sort of what this question is <laughs> contrived to. Uh, to and to that's a, yeah, and that's the right intuition. What is okay. your recursion here? Um, what is my recursion? I mean, I I think of. Dynamic programming is usually pretty bottom up. Like I'm imagining an array okay. of solutions that, uh, you know, for all i from one up to and including target, you could store the number of moves required to reach that number. And then the sort of base mm-hmm. case is like i equals one, and the number of moves is zero. And then the case that you care about is is i equals target. Um, so that's cool. Just, um, awesome. I'm okay with that. So let's yeah. try to write the code. Uh, sure. I, let me let me walk through again in language just. Um, like the the step of how you actually uh, compute the values in that array, I guess. Well, yeah, because there's this like this like limit operation, which I feel like it matters and I haven't thought about yet. I guess maybe let me simplify my thinking by pretending there's no the there's no limit on the number of increments I can apply. Like in sure. that case. Yeah, there is no there is no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, essentially I'm saying like uh, store this for now. We'll come back to it. Um, so that's the hope. And then um, I guess what I would do when I saw a number is I would say, yeah, like how do I compute a number based on numbers less than it? Because I will fill up the array from left to right. And I would say, well, it's the minimum of, well, so it's, it's one plus the minimum of the number immediately to the left of it, and that corresponds to, uh, you can add one, good, fine. Um, and the other option is the double the current integer. Um, if it is an even number, you could, uh, and the other way you can get there is by doubling something um, um, half of its size, and so you could do that. And then that's a recurrence relation, it's constant time to compute at each step, so you'd end up at the end of the day, I guess I can write this down. I want to write this down. Um, you end up with so uh, sim- sim- simplified version of the problem. Uh, 
let's say it's like oh of n space where n is the uh, target. Um, um, open space, open time, uh, and it's like a pretty like classical DP. There's almost nothing interesting about it. Um, it's almost so simple that it makes me wonder if there's like some analysis you can do to the numbers and just like get some constant time thing. Like, is this am I sort of over? Uh, you know, I think like there is one uh, extra uh, aspect of it. Like uh, there is max doubles. Like you cannot. Uh, make your number yeah. double more than that much time. So, but yeah, I think like in terms of that is just one additional complexity um, because like right. then that could be like uh, one dimension of your uh, DP, right? So it's just, that makes it sense. May not me. be just a linear answer. Right, right. So I guess if uh, we'll call this limit k. So this is the real version of the problem. Uh, uh, okay, limit. Um, so the limit is on the number of doublings. I see. Um, then, yeah, you could do again a DP, but it would be this sort of like n by k DP. And then for all inputs n comma k, you'd have Again, a sort of two-dimensional matrix of, of sub-problems, and then for each sub-problem, you could have an answer. And mm -hmm. um, the yeah, it's like pretty standard as well, I guess. If you've done a lot of DPs, at least, which I've done a few in the past. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you, if you were doubling, you'd go like down a row or up a row, whatever. Um, and you'd rely on a sub-problem which has k minus one many quota uh, like limit. Um, mm -hmm. So again, details aside, like boundary conditions and so on and so forth, like there's not that much sort of like meaty or interesting that I feel like I haven't <laughs> mentioned, I guess, about this approach. But this is a, a thing, and I'll write down as well. This is like a, of n times k space, and you can do the DP thing where you save space by, um, I guess, whichever is smaller n or k. You can, uh, how do I say this? You, you can reduce space by a linear factor by uh, only keeping around the, the things you actually need. Um, well, it would work only for k. So like, I'll say this, can optimize away the k. I can definitely see a way to optimize it using the standard, standard uh, EP space trick. Do you know what I mean by that? Is that like useful? Mm -hmm. uh, and then about into k time. This is uh, this is my like sort of high level understanding of of what a DP for the real problem could look like. Um, do you have any questions for me about that? Uh, no, I think I'm, I'm good. Um, okay, but then again, back to the analysis. Like this, it's starting to look like uh, this is a problem about binary numbers because there's all these multiplications by two, and mm. in some sense. You kind of want to, like, you want to go top down. Like, why don't I just start with a large number and start dividing it by two, roughly? Um, mm. You know, like, uh, if I look at the target input as a binary number, um, doubling corresponds to, like, in some sense, I want to do these operations in reverse. Um, I want to decrement and uh, divide by two, but only if the number was even. And I want to do some combination of these operations to as quickly get to one. Um, mm. And I didn't ask to clarify it, but uh, I'm assuming target is one or greater. Otherwise, the task is impossible. Is that a valid assumption? Um, sorry? Um, can I assume that target is positive? Yes, yes, yes. OK, forgot to ask that earlier. Um, anyway, so I was saying about doing the operations in reverse. Target's even, you can divide it, but it costs you uh, up to this limit. And it's dividing is always sort of better in some sense, like you get more quickly to to one. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to do something like vaguely greedy, which I haven't justified a proof of, but I have a very solid intuition that it should work, which is that I want to make it so that, well, let me think about this. In some sense, like the division by two is basically just throwing away a zero. Uh, but yeah, it, it feels like there's got to be some way to look at this as a binary number and just make it work. So let's see, let's see. 
Maybe I'll think quietly for another couple of minutes, if that's all right. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay, this seems like a cool problem. So I drew an example of a binary number on paper and now I'm thinking through it. Um, it feels like, well, subtraction by one. Well, no, no, I'm not done yet. Hold on, hold on, one sec. Okay, yeah, I think I am done. Okay, so um, unless you've seen this before, um, this is going to be pretty hard to explain, but I'll try. Uh, and I guess I'll use an example. So, um, so think of the target as a binary number. Um, uh, yeah, are you with me here? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'll walk you through what I'm thinking about. So suppose um, k equals like 3, as an example. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the idea here is uh, when I use one of my divisions, uh, which I have at most three of, it corresponds to, uh, to removing a 0 from the end of the array. Like I've sort of shifted everything. Um, to the right, and I've chopped off a zero from the end. I've divided by two. Great. Um, and that only applies if it ends with a zero, and is it's even. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, I could do that right away. Well, actually, does this matter? I th it feels like it makes sense to divide by zero immediately, like as soon as possible. Anyway, yeah, so that's basically what I'm thinking is doing this greedily. So, like, first of all, you'd be looking from the um, uh, the sort of right side, I guess, the least significant bits uh, going up towards the, the higher bits. And you, you see a zero, and immediately you greedily decide that uh, the best thing you can do right now is divide by two because you are getting the most sort of value in a, in a vague sense that is not <laughs> made precise. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, if I was trying to prove this correct, I think that would be an important property in the proof, but uh, you, you you think it's important to divide by two, so you do it, and that uses up one of your um, one of your quota. So now I only have two remaining divisions. Uh, and then I could do it again, um, because I think that that's a good idea. Again, I'll justify it. And then I see a one, and that's um, the goal would be to subtract one um, from the one, because I can't divide by two, but I'd like to. Um, so I use a decrement operation, and that counts. So again, it's like total like num ops, num ops, and then the remaining is num ops is now two because I've done two divides. The remaining is now one because I divided twice. Um, and then I would uh, let's say this. Uh, I would turn this into a zero, and I'd count that as an operation, and then I'd shift, um, and then I'd uh, look at the zero and I'd shift again, but it would cost me a division. Uh, wait, wait, sorry. I think I counted this wrong, but basically, wait, sorry, one, two, three. After I've done three divides, uh, there's no operations left, and it's costing me four. And now, at this point, I'm out of divides, so I literally just have to count. And so this is a number, and I have to count that much. Mm -hmm. It's making me think the way to actually write this code could be made a lot simpler. Um, Again, all the edge cases and boundary conditions are not coming to mind, but the um, but the idea is basically like the number of divides you have. Uh, yeah, like you can you can just sort of chop off that much of the number, um, and you pay for each one. But besides that, and and you pay for each uh, place. Gosh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'll take a step back now, but I guess uh, without having figured out the details of the logic, I feel good about this approach and um, 
if it worked, it would be very efficient. It would take, um, you know, uh, log time, let's say, if log is like 32 or 64, because uh, you only have to look at the bits of the number. So it's, uh, it's very efficient for large numbers. Um, I'm kind of rambling on. Is what I'm saying making sense to you, or do you have questions about it? Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. I'm totally uh, following it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, um, you want to, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can you write the code? Uh, I can try. I can try. I think I almost don't have a crystal clear sense in my mind of what it would look like, but um, but I can try. I, I think it might actually start with pseudocode. So like. So I actually make sure I understand this. Um, so let me try that first. Because again, there's all these boundary conditions in edge cases and so on and so forth. Um, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the way forward here. I'll try to write English. So like, um, suppose, yeah, hmm. okay, okay. So I'll start with the function signature. So let's say, function, this is, um, this is sort of fewest offs. Um, this is target. And we'll say it was a positive stupid number. So this is, um, uh, but it's not trivial to write. So 
Uh, it's all this bid manipulation. Yuck. Um, I haven't done this in a while. This is target, but I want to mask it with. Um, sorry, let's write better split. First section target, but masked to be including um, a number of ones that's equal to the first section len. So well, let's mask equals. Molly. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've written code like this. Let mask equals, I'm going to say one shifted by first section len. I'll check the output one to the set. And then all minus one. Something something like this to create that many ones. That many ones. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's actually correct. So if I take one and I shift it that many positions, um, I hit five. I shift one five positions. I get five zeros. I subtract one. I get five ones. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy with this. And the order of operations matters. The addition um, would happen first, but we parenthesize it, so we're happy. Um, we end it with target, and we get a section. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. Okay. First section cost is first section like plus plus what? Um, plus first section. Uh, so it's it's the called uh, well, the number of ones. Um, count ones. There's a built-in function rest for this. I could also write the function <clears throat> myself if you like. Let me just yeah, copy out. And then there's a couple ways to write this. The simplest is the built-in function. But I could also write it out if you like. And then the only thing I haven't written down is this bitlen function, which x dot uh, leading one, largest one, a log maybe. It's like the binary logarithm. I actually don't know what the library function for this is, but I could write it myself. Um, sure. I'm almost certain it exists. Yeah, would you like to see me write this function myself? Uh, no, no, I'm OK. Uh, let's pause for a feedback. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I think like uh, in the first question, uh, I think like uh, in the first question, I really like the way uh, you clarified a lot of reform um, aspects about the input output. And I think like as an L3, that is really good uh, thing to have. Like I, I feel like most of the L3 uh, don't go like try to jump into the solution. Um, I like the aspects that like uh, you kind of like I explain. I like the way you explain that log uh, could be just a constant when it's in terms of the integers. Um, so yeah, I like that uh, insight about how you think about it. Uh, yeah, I like the way uh, you have used like really good naming conventions to uh, okay. implement it. Uh, yeah, I think like uh, that was. Uh, uh, I think like the implementation part was good in uh, for the second uh, for the first problem. Uh, I like the idea that you you kind of think about like. Uh, in the right direction, that it could be like loosely sorted list of things, uh, and when I say that like, can manage search be a uh, search tree be used, I think like you were able to come up with the uh, approach, and uh, I think like uh, you had tendency to do miss the login factor, but yeah, I think like mm -hmm. apart from that, you were able to uh, come up with, uh, do the uh, time and space complexity analysis for your problem. Um, so I think like the all those things were really good. Uh, maybe you can like. Uh, yeah, but I think like L3 it doesn't make sense uh, that much sense. But uh, if we can talk about like in what situation your first solution is good, in what situation the, your second solution is good, that would have been a really good signal. Let's say for example, um, the call to top uh, API is very less as compared to add score and reset. In that situation, your first solution could be uh, simple and still be better. Uh, whereas in second, it could be uh, if, if there are almost similar kind of calls, then I think like second solution does make sense. So, yeah, I think like uh, that trade-off, if you can identify, uh, that could have been a really uh, strong signal. Uh, but yeah, as, as an L3 level, it's not that uh, super important. Uh, for the second question, I think like uh, you kind of like, uh, there could have been like one, uh, something like which you could have uh, considered before jumping into the conclusion. Uh, I think like you can solve it with a greedy, uh, Whenever, like, because, like, you would like to have, you you would like to double it, as uh, you would like to double the larger number as uh, early as possible. So the mm -hmm. simple solution could be like you are trying to move from target to one, and if 
which is an even number and there is a max mm. uh, doubles is uh, is still allowed then you will try to uh, divide it otherwise you will uh, try to decrement by one until you reach to the one so mm. it is a, there is a possible way of trying to uh, solve it in uh, using a greedy in a log in time uh, because you are kind of like uh, uh, going from target to the one and the reason it just makes sense is like you will try to use your uh, max like you will try to use your operation of like double as uh, with, with the larger impact as possible so it is kind mm -hmm. of a, uh, a greedy kind of a problem uh, mm -hmm. but that's okay like uh, i think like uh, i didn't give any hint or anything i just like the way you were thinking about storing it and those aspects i really like those things so i i still wanted to go ahead with that um uh, so yeah and then like those those are the few things which you can consider so yeah and the high level i think like your communication is good uh, it's just like you are uh, back in the game after some break so maybe some more implementations uh, some more um uh, like thought uh, thorough approach towards problem solving um uh, mm -hmm. that could be uh, something like which you can uh, consider doing it so yeah hmm. okay yeah for sure um, out of curiosity, is this like binary number approach something that you um, endorse? Uh, I think like uh, that is that is what that what that is what the greedy would also be uh, doing, right? So, uh, but uh, yeah, the implementation or the articulation could have been the simpler. That whenever uh, possible, oh. we'll try to, uh, divide it by two. Okay, I, I, I misunderstood something. So you're saying? Let me think about this. Like so you I'm can like stop the greedy approach be early. Because my concern, yeah, my concern was that in the worst case, the greedy approach would take linear time. But you're saying that once the uh, quota reaches zero and you run out of uh, doubling tokens, you immediately you can just use the target minus one. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yes, 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 yes. That is way simpler than what I wrote. Okay, thank you, thank you. Good, good, good. good. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think like. Um, I'm 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 uh, happy the way you you can think uh, you can still uh, pursue. So I think like this, if this would have been a real interview, I would mm -hmm. definitely have uh, given a higher call. So okay. yeah, but and there there will always be something which I can say that okay you could have done this you could have done that. So yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Um, I think yeah that's about uh, this interview. Um, so yeah, do you have any other questions about like your search uh, or like how your like maybe I would like to understand like how you are planning to apply, uh, have uh, like search, mm -hmm. how how you are trying to search uh, or apply for jobs and those mm -hmm. things. If you need any help in that, if you want me oh, to yeah. refer, uh, uh, like yeah, I, I'm a, I I would be happy to help. Thank you. So, Thanks. That's very kind. Um, yeah. So I, I did actually have a friend refer me um, just last week, and I applied to three postings because there's a limit of three. And I, I got rejected from all of them at the resume screen, <laughs> um, or like you know, a recruiter said uh, uh, I got an email basically for each of them saying we're not interested. So I'm not sure. I guess how do I say this? I, th I think the sense is that on paper, um, like the years of experience number, uh, I have very few, and so I think that I'm going to struggle to. Uh, get to the point where I speak to a human being. Um, and so I'm, that's the main thing that I'm thinking about with my job search. And then I'm thinking about like, how do I talk directly to actual hiring managers? Um, like ideally through some shared connection, like this is, this is the thing that I haven't yet figured out is how to get interviews <laughs> in the current market. Mm. Uh, I think, yeah, that's a good strategy maybe, or uh, maybe like uh, you can expand uh, beyond like Google, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes like Google may not mm -hmm. even, uh, yeah, they might not be interested in, uh, yeah, rehiring the people who got laid off uh, because mm -hmm. they, they might might want to hire people on a lower salary. There could be a lot of things, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so maybe you can expand your search beyond Google. That could be yeah. one thing, and uh, definitely like uh, um, reach out for like. Uh, recruiters on LinkedIn reaching out. I think like for grad uh, university hire position, I think like I don't think like uh, at least what I have seen uh, is like usually hiring manager don't don't specifically 
um uh hire directly i think like usually university hires at least in my experience get hired as a pool and then hiring managers can request and get um, from the pool uh, that yeah. that's what i have seen but there may be like uh, at least this is how i have seen in the big tech but maybe in a, a smaller setup this could be different yeah. uh but yeah i think like uh, just not keep your uh, search just for the hiring manager you can also reach out mm-hmm. to the recruiters that could be one one way of doing it uh yeah i think like uh, here um, in interviewing.io i think like they have some way like um some way of like uh, uh, forwarding your uh, resume for um, like some some hiring managers pool they have uh, maybe you can reach out to uh, support and try like uh, explain your situation and uh, is there any help they can provide beyond just mock interview service uh, mm-hmm. at least to get uh, your foot into door uh, that could be one step uh, you can do um i i will also try to ask like uh, if, if there is there what what is the avenues available um mm-hmm. and i will provide you a few names and then you mm-hmm. may just uh, reach out oh, thanks. Uh, yeah but, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh I think yeah those those could be the few things which you can uh consider I I I think I gave one uh I don't remember let me just check it mm-hmm. this Okay yeah I think like code signal was something where I gave uh some test uh and like uh based on that test score I think like they uh, they they forwarded my profile to some uh, places Okay you um, said it's called this is like uh yeah at line number 36 code signal um okay. actually yeah what happened is like uh, I gave uh, uh screening test for Uh, Coinbase, and mm-hmm. uh, based on the overall score of uh, this test, uh, they even forwarded. They asked me like if they can forward to some other uh, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, companies, um, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, maybe you can just explore it. I'm not sure whether mm-hmm. it's uh, uh, it's a full. Uh, it's, it's about it, but yeah, I just wanted to give. Uh, yeah, definitely. To, yeah. Absolutely, I'll look into that. Yeah uh yeah sure uh those are the few things i can think about uh yeah so maybe like you can um uh like expand your search beyond on uh, mm-hmm. google maybe you can uh, ask for referrals uh, in few of the other companies mm-hmm. uh, that would be the few ways you can think about i definitely like the uh, way of like reaching out directly to the hiring managers or recruiters on over linkedin uh, that that definitely could work um one 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 small, small thing which you can do is like you can broadcast that you are open for uh university hiring role on a blind kind of a thing where uh, uh like yeah i have heard from friend of mine that he has got referral in multiple places and uh, even the recruiters are replying on a blind uh, but i'm not sure like if you have uh, still have access to the blind account or not If not, uh, you can take a head that's a great account. question. I had never signed up for Blind when I was at Google, so I'm guessing I don't have access. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think like I have seen Blind so, uh, providing a way to sign up you uh, uh, by stating that you are a, uh, impacted thing. I um, see. Okay, I can look into that. And then you're saying posting on Blind might be a way to get um, some contact. Yeah, I'm just giving like uh, I'm I'm saying from like this is like a zero uh, investment kind of a thing and uh, right, if right. you get something out of it it's great right so but therefore you you are just broadcasting it in a, in one place so yeah mm-hmm. cool okay yeah uh, yeah i think like i have seen like few uh, yeah temporary yeah 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 i see like there is a way of doing it uh, yeah i am just posting the link in the chat oh, thank you uh, I'm not like I haven't read it through, but yeah, I I have also heard that they are providing a way to have uh, some temporary account. Okay, cool. I'll look into that. Thanks. Cool, okay. awesome. Um, uh, all the best for your search. Uh, I Thank really you like uh, uh, I really like your uh, problem solving and the stuff. I really enjoyed it. Um, Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks again for, for all your help and all the pointers. This has been really helpful. Uh, no worries, yeah. All right. Uh, take Bye -bye. care. Have a good one. Bye.